Sports fans, come on down to Tom Reed's Hockey City Pub for one of the best dining experiences around. Great food, an awesome staff, and amazing atmosphere is waiting for you just minutes from XL Energy Center on West 7th in St. Paul. Whether you're watching a game, attending a concert, or just out for a good time, Tom's is the place to be. Enjoy twofers during all live Minnesota Wild games, Viking games, and Packer games. Now serving breakfast on Sundays until 2 p.m. While dining, check out the collection of over 400 pieces of hockey memorabilia. Having a get-together? Let them cater your event. They have room for you in their newly remodeled back bar with extra parking in their brand new parking lot. It's Tom Reed's Hockey City Pub. Give them a call, 651-292-9916. That's 651-292-9916 to schedule your next event. And check them out on the web at TomReeds.com. And if you see Tom, don't mention Ken Dryden. Hello and welcome to the Civ and the Scribe podcast. Episode one, it's here. I am Dan Myers from Wild.com and with me, as always, Kevin Gord from Valley Sports North. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Dan. Every journey, no matter how long, begins with one first step. That is this today from Tria Rank as uh, we are with you for the first time officially as the Civ and the Scribe, and looking forward to this uh, new project for you and I. We are doing this broadcast live from Tria Rink in downtown St. Paul from a very special place, Kevin, that you are sitting in the chair right now where many great decisions regarding our favorite hockey club are made. We are in the GM Perch, high above the practice rink at Tria Rink, and it's fitting for us today because this is going to be a very wild, heavy episode of this Civ and the Scribe. I just called you the Scrib. The Civ and the Scribe podcast. Uh, this is not always going to be the case, Kevin. We will do everything from peewees to the pros. We're going to have guests from all levels of hockey, men's, women's, boys, girls, high school, college, professional. But it's a big news day here for the Wild as we record this right now, a couple days before the uh, Discover Winter Classic at Target Field on December 30th. We just got done talking to newly extended Wild head coach Dean Evison, and we'll get to him uh, certainly a little bit. We're also going to have a nice conversation with our guy, Jackson Maine himself, Marcus Felino. And Felino delivered maybe the line of the year uh, as we were getting set up here down below us is the uh, the media center where the players are made available to the um, the other scribes and was asked about the extension for the coaching staff and said, yeah, me and the boys were out there practicing just looking for maybe – a little thank you here along the way. <laughs> he did not get that thank you. We'll have to ask him about that later on the show. But uh, the Moose, wildly popular with the, the fans and such a big part of the success that this organization is currently having. And I'm really excited, though, Dan. You brought it up, the extension for this coaching staff, three years. Uh, love the way they're meshing uh, this program together with this hockey team. It sure feels like the players have an awful lot of say in this thing. And so as much as Felino was joking, I think there, there is some, some truth to that too, that the, the players and coaches are on the same page. As you look now at the now barren ice sheet here at Tria Rink, players have filtered off the ice. And you've mentioned this, by the way, Kirill Kaprizov. Huh, amazing. Every single day we are out here at practice. It would be really easy for that guy, speaking of contract extensions, $9 million richer uh, coming into this season. Uh, earning that deal, every penny of that, by the way, he is really good. But he is always one of the first guys on the ice, and he is every single day, if not the last one, he's the second to last one, or he is going off at the same time as the guy who's the last one. There's not a harder worker on this hockey team than Kirill Kaprizov, and it's such a great example. I know it's cliche to always, you know, hope and want your highest paid guys to be the hardest workers he is for this team and I, I marvel because we get done with our media availability and it's usually 25 30 35 minutes after practice official ends which is kind of where we're at right now and he's out there working on a different skill a couple days ago it was him and darby hendrickson working on his one-time shot in his power play position uh in the offensive zone today he was doing some battle drills with his best buddy matt zuccarello and they were doing a little one-on-one keep away with the puck and literally stays out there until the rink guy comes out 
and has to kind of ask them, hey, can you guys wrap it up? I've got to do the ice. Someone else will be on the ice here shortly. We're right now 45, 50 minutes removed from when practice officially ended. And this is, like you said, Dan, this isn't once in a while. It's every single day. This kid loves to be at the rink, and you, you kind of have a window into why he is the player he is, so creative, because he's done work like this all his life. This is who he is. This is what he likes to do. This is the Sib and the Scribe podcast, episode one, presented by Minnesota Hockey Magazine. In that vein, Kevin, what you were just saying kind of reminds me of that scene in the movie Miracle where Herb is skating the boys and the guy goes and shuts off the lights and, <laughs> and goes and tells him, you know, I got I to gotta clean the ice so I can go home and Herb's just leave the keys. <laughs> That's yeah, like one you, of the, you, if if Kirill, you know, you, you go up to Kirill and and tell him, hey, Kirill, we need you to get off the ice. I got to, you know, I got to clean it because for the next team to come in, he'd probably do it. Just leave the keys. <laughs> he probably could do it, right? I think he'd live here if they let him. Um, he he loves being at the rank and great he's place got to live. A, by the way, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful facility. You've he, been downstairs. It's it's gorgeous. Yeah, you actually again walking around this place, which we're lucky enough to do before practice, and we go downstairs like we did today and get tested. The whirlpools, the workout facilities, the little restaurant area the TVs. Uh, these guys spend an awful lot of time here. They get here early in the morning. A guy like Marcus Foligno today, um, by the time he gets done, it's the middle of the afternoon. So it's a, it's a full work day. How fun would it be, by the way, you know, to be one of those guys, you know, if you're a rookie guy or call-up guy, and you know, they stash you at the team hotel or something, which I'm, it's great. I'm sure, the, I'm sure the facilities are nice at the team hotel where they stay, but if you were that guy and you're like 21-year-old single guy just up here you know, living your dream out. I, I don't think I'd ever leave this place. I'd just crash <laughs> on the couch downstairs. They got the chef making you food. They got the TV. You got the Whirlpool facilities. I go up for a little twirl on the ice. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's uh, a little different than they used to do it back in your day. <clears throat> a little different and even different than when the Wild first started getting going as an organization. Remember, this is a team that when I was coaching the women's team at St. Thomas, our home rink was Parade over in Minneapolis. Well, we shared that rink with the Minnesota Wild. They didn't have a facility like this. So uh, when they weren't at the XL on game days and there were concerts and other activities at the XL Center, they were at places like St. Thomas Arena. They were at Parade. They were all over the Twin Cities, wherever they could get ice. Now the guys are here. It's a home. As you said, they spend a lot of time here and enjoy doing so. This has been a huge upgrade for the Minnesota Wild. Well, shoot, even a couple of years ago, Kevin, we would, you know, it wasn't uncommon for us on a day like today, middle of the week, practice we'd be driving down to st thomas ice rink which yeah. don't get me wrong it's, it, nice. it's, a, it's a nice community rink it's not their home uh it's not it's not their home you know it's a great home rink for st thomas academy and and the great program they have down there but you know it's not a place where you see an nhl team and it was a dress and drive so they you know they dress at yeah. the x and then go get on a bus in full equipment it's only a 10 minute drive down to the rink this is a, a much better setup so with that very wild heavy, as we said today, all kinds of stuff. We got the Dean Evison extension. We got the Winter Classic coming up. We got injuries to discuss. We've got Marcus Felino coming in here. So let's get started, huh? Let's do it. Let's do it. But first, before we do that, a word from our sponsor. The Functional Neurology Center is a Minnetonka-based clinic staffed by a caring and progressive team of chiropractic neurologists who are experienced in treating post-concussion syndrome, chronic pain, dizziness, whiplash, migraine, and performance enhancement. They are the concussion doctors that you can trust for your comprehensive brain health in Minnesota and who have helped many local professional hockey players that include Mark Parrish, Brock Nelson, Zach Parisi, and Tyler Nanny. The FNC combines innovative technological therapies with manual therapy to improve human function. My name is Mark Parrish and I played uh, hockey for 15 years and professionally and I had some concussions, some head issues. Uh, we heard about the Dr. Schmo and we're certainly glad I did because the, the difference from, from not just session, session to session during the day, but from day to day is, has been drastic. And uh, just with suffering from sleep depravity for, for years, uh, the last three, four nights, I've slept like a baby and slept again like I did before. I had kids for crying out loud. You can find them online at thefnc.com. All right, we're back. Siv and the Scribe podcast, episode one, presented by Minnesota Hockey Magazine. And, Kevin, we, we touched on it already. Dean Evison 
uh, sign a deal. They usually don't disclose the terms of these contracts, but Dean Evison, nice enough to <laughs> drop a little nugget on us on the way out. With an F-bomb along the way. With an F-bomb along the way, which was brilliantly <laughs> timed, by the way. A three-year contract extension from the sounds of it uh, for him, and not only him, but his entire staff. So Darby Hendrickson, Bob Woods, Brett McLean, uh, Jonas Plum, TJ Jindra, Freddie, Freddie Shabbat. Shabbat. You yep. can't forget the goalie coach, right? Um, especially here on the Civ and the Scribe. This whole crew works together as one, unlike any other staff I think I've ever been around at any level. And I, I know there are coaches in the NHL now, and I know there have been prominent ones that have been in the league the last three or four years that want no part of guys like you and me talking to assistant coaches, dealing with assistant coaches. Um, just from a professional standpoint, they want more of that kind of, I don't want to say attention, but they want to be the voice that speaks. And Dean is not like that at all. He allows, encourages um, us to talk to his assistants. He encourages those assistants to have a voice within their own meetings. And it really is refreshing one, to see a guy like that, but two, to see a guy like that have success and to see that model work. Yeah, when I think about Dean Evison, and I was just, you know, like you with my family spending Christmas, and you get the question of what makes this coach tick, what makes it work with Dean Evison. The, the word that I keep coming back to is chemistry. You can't fake it, and it's so big in hockey. He is able to cultivate together, cultivate chemistry with his coaching staff and with his hockey team, and I think the way he does that – is he's able to put the ego aside on his end, and he asks his players to be the same type of guys, right? The leaders in this room that the coaching staff, starting with Dean, rely on. I'm talking about Jared Spurgeon, I'm talking about Matt Dumba, and I'm talking about Marcus Foligno. You check the ego at the door, and you're all about the team first. He's the same way with his coaching staff. It's the group. It's not him. And I think that was very symbolic of Dean to wait to talk until the entire staff had that contract extension, and I think he practices what he preaches, and I think the players see that, and I think that helps the buy-in factor. I really do. Typically with these head coaches, they're going to be granted a little bit more runway when it comes to the length of their contract, and obviously we don't know the lengths of the contracts of the assistant coaches, but if I know Dean the way I think I do and the way you do, I, I can almost guarantee you that he insisted on you know, matching contracts in terms of length yep. with his assistant coaches. I'm sure that process will now begin with uh, training staff, trainers, uh, even down to a guy like Andrew Height. Like the way Andrew Height, by the way, is team services. We call him Whitey. Uh, great guy. Fantastic at his job. But everything is a team. Like I had a chance to chat with Dean yesterday to work ahead on this story that's on wild.com today. Please go read it if you haven't. Um, story talking about Dean and kind of his this one day at a uh, one day at a time mentality coach who's now going to be locked in for the foreseeable future as the Zamboni goes by we do have the sounds of hockey here but you know getting a chance to talk to him and see the the buy-in that he has really with this whole staff and how he views it as one team he views the players the coaching staff the wild.com scribe guy like he he relishes the opportunity to work with everyone and have it be a collaborative effort and again i can't say it enough it really is refreshing in this day and age to have a coach who's confident enough in his own abilities to have these sort of you know he admitted to me on the phone i i, I don't want yes men and women around here. I, I want to be challenged. I, I want people to bring descending opinion. Bill Guerin's the exact same way. Yep. And it, you know, both those guys we both know are very passionate individuals. They're they're very boisterous. They don't sugarcoat. They don't beat <laughs> around the bush. Those two specifically. And that dynamic to me is very interesting because Bill Guerin said it today. They didn't know each other at all when Bill Guerin came here two years ago. You'd think that that would have the potential to get pretty explosive. And I think it maybe does at times, but at the end of the day, they just want to win and they want to do it with that team first mentality. And that's where I think that relationship has really taken off. Yeah, as I get to know both of these guys, um, the passion they have for the team and for winning is the common denominator. You hit on it, Dan. These guys probably do have 
some heated arguments at some point and disagreements with the way a game played out or the way a week of practice went. But at the end of the day, as you mentioned, their their love of hockey and their passion for driving this team towards the Stanley Cup. I love that Dean Evison brought that up today in his press conference. He said, listen, we're here to win a cup. If, if you can't say that comfortably, you're in the wrong line of work. And that's true. And I love that he is that stand-up guy that really is unafraid to speak from the heart and tell you what he's thinking. And for better or for worse, it's out there. And he says, we're up front with our players, we're up front with our coaches, and I'll be the same way with you guys. And for the most part, I felt that from day one with this guy. And it's a pleasure to work around this coaching staff. Uh, They give their time to all of us that cover the team. We're here to promote the team. You are on Wild.com. I am on Bally Sports North. And we're going to be as good as they let us be, right? And there's a lot of trust that they give us. And, for instance, today, you know, Marcus Foligno has 8 million other things he could be doing, but he's going to come up here and spend 25 minutes with us. That's the way this organization works. I've been doing this since 2006. It's never been in a better place than it is right now. Well, when you look at just from our perspective, just to kind of pull the curtain back a little bit, and this is nothing against previous administrations. You know, they, they run their ship however they want to run their yeah. ship, and it's entirely up to them. But the kind of access that I have and that you have, and specifically when you watch the video crew, our our awesome video crew at wild.com, the access those guys have to Dean Evison, for example, was mic'd up at practice today. They're going to have something on wild.com in a couple days. Awesome. It's going to be brilliant because Dean's a personality. But they have guys that are mic'd up all the time. They have guys with cameras in the locker room all the time. That kind of access never happened before Bill Garrett. And it really is to me, in this day and age where, you know, it's not the TV guy and the radio guy and the newspaper people and that's all there is. Like, if you want to get eyeballs on your product and you want fans to follow you, you have to interact with them in very different ways and find different ways to promote your team. And the job that Billy has come in and and basically said, and, and you mentioned the word trust, and that's what it's all about is, He trusts folks, whether it's the players on the ice, whether it's the coaching staff behind the bench, whether it's John Worley and the training crew and everything they've had to deal with with COVID the last few days, whether it's me on wild.com, whether it's the video crew, whether it's you guys on the Bally side, there's just an immense amount of trust there that we're all going to do our jobs the way we're supposed to do it, and we're all going to be better off for it. All boats rise, as you like to say. Yeah, and that's the way it's working right now. It's... uh it's been great to see the success that this team has had. We're not even to the halfway point of the season. And you get excited as a Wild fan, and we're all fans of the team. At the heart of this whole thing, I was a season ticket holder before I got hired to cover this team. And I love this team, and I want them to win. And I don't care, I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, I'm excited about where this team is going. I'm watching the World Juniors before it got postponed, and I'm up late at night watching this character named Jesper Wallstead play in goal oh, for were, Team Sweden. You were blowing up my phone about I'm this I'm all kid. excited, man. Like, I'm, I'm a fan. This is our first-round pick from last year, and I think they hit a home run. I'm watching highlights last night on Twitter of Rossi and Boldy down there lighting the lamp with the Iowa Wild, and Rossi tied the game late, won it in overtime on a penalty shot. This excites me as a fan of the Minnesota Wild. We've got a great team right now. We've got great prospects coming down the pike, and I think it's really going to be cool this weekend. Uh on a standalone uh, stage like the Winter Classic to see our town and our team led by Kirill Kaprizov out on that ice. I am pumped, and I love love that Dean Evison today, when asked about it, says, no, this is not just another game. This is something special. This is something these guys will remember for the rest of their lives. I know on Twitter, I believe it was last night, our esteemed producer, Zach Halverson, tweeted something to the extent of, of course, you know, it's actually been a mild winter, but of course, <laughs> the national cameras come to come to town, and all of a sudden, you know, Minnesota is this barren, frozen wasteland. And I couldn't agree more. Uh, one, you know, because that's you know, I've, we got a couple national folks here in town that have have commented, you know, is everything is it frozen here all the time? It's like, well, no, funny. Like two weeks ago, we had severe thunderstorm warnings. We had. You know, a 15-inch snowfall a couple weeks ago that's already melted and gone. That doesn't happen this time of year. It happens in March. It doesn't happen in December. Not at all. And we've also had an additional snowfall after that that has already melted. We have the third round of snow on the ground right now. So it is a little bit unfortunate that, you know, it's going to get that reputation, I think, this weekend of being this 
frozen place that's always cold this time of year. But you know what? Billy Guerin said it today too. He doesn't expect it to really change much in terms of the people and the hardiness of Minnesotans that are going to be at Target Field on Saturday night. And I agree. I think people are going to take this as kind of a challenge and a badge of honor to say, hey, you know what? This is all you got? And it's easy for me to say sitting in a nice, toasty baseball press box, but I agree. I, know, I love that Bill Garrett mentioned that because I think Minnesotans embrace this type of situation. I got to be there as a fan the last time when they played over at what was TCF Bank Stadium. Over the Huntington University. Bank Stadium. And it was awesome. Uh, I mean, it was just such a beautiful setup. Light snow in the air. It was chilly. It wasn't like it's going to be this weekend. but um, and, and the team embraced it and played a great game. They blew out the Blackhawks. It's a huge game. St. Louis just took over first place in the division. Uh, these teams are likely going to be at or near the top of the standings all the way through to the end of the season. So these points probably get magnified a little bit, and it's it's a great opportunity for this team to get back on track because because of the postponements and the way the schedule set up, they haven't played in a long time. They haven't won a game in three weeks from where we are right now. As we record this podcast, the last time they won was December 9th out in San Jose. So these guys are hungry to get back in the win column, and this weekend's a perfect time to do it. Before we continue with a little winter classic preview, let's get a word in from our sponsor. Hey, pal, you already know that CrankyApe.com is the coolest auction site on the web for everything that rolls, floats, or has an engine. But did you know we'll also sell your toys for you? Why deal with sketchy characters, tire kickers, and no-shows when you can have the ape do it? It's a heck of a lot easier, and if you're not built like me, a lot safer, too. Just go to CrankyApe.com and click on the blue burst. I'll take it from there. CrankyApe.com. Why monkey around anywhere else? Whether you're an enthusiast or simply pond hockey curious, the Stillwater Fire and Ice Adult Pond Hockey Tournament is for you. From January 28th to the 30th on Stillwater's Lily Lake, your team is guaranteed to play a minimum of four games with all skill levels welcome and with parity in mind. Proceeds from the entire weekend of festivities will benefit the Herb Brooks Foundation, which provides free learn to skate and learn to play hockey clinics for kids throughout the local metro area. The Herb Brooks Foundation, the Stillwater Chamber of Commerce, and all the sponsors involved with this event invite you to come to Stillwater for a wonderful winter weekend of fun. For more information, you can register your team. Go to ahahockey.com right now before it's too late. And so, Kevin, we mentioned it there before the break. Let's talk a little bit about the game itself. We are a couple days away. It's amazing because we're finally here, right? Like, I mean, this game was announced originally January 1st, 2020, pre-pandemic times. A much different world, a much simpler, easier world back then. Kevin, you remember what the game was? A little trivia question. The game, it was intermission of what, who is playing, and where. It was a winter classic. Obviously, Was it the one at uh, down in Dallas at yes, the Cotton Bowl? the Cotton Bowl. The Dallas Stars and the Nashville Predators, a game Dallas won 4-2. to Little did we know that two months later the world would be shut down. Everything Feels like be, forever ago, Danny. I know. It's, it's, it's amazing. For, to me, There's it, it really has turned into like life before the pandemic and life after because it seems like five years ago. You're exactly right. But it's finally here, two years of buildup. Uh, The game itself, a little bit of uncertainty right now in terms of what that lineup could look like for Minnesota. We do know this. Jared Spurgeon, uh, lower body injury, he will not play. Sounds like today, a couple weeks. That's what we heard from Bill Guerin. Couple could be two, could be three. Who knows? Hopefully it's not a long time. Uh, Yule Erickson Eck, upper body injury sustained in Minnesota's last game in Dallas, which also seems like a lifetime ago. Uh, He will not play in the game again couple weeks what that means exactly we don't know hopefully not a long time but we did get some good news potentially and this is where we just don't know anything with the uncertainty of COVID but Jonas Brodine could play in that game he was placed on the COVID-19 protocol list earlier this week and if he can play with the the circumstances that have gone from 10 days down to five days with the when it was the positive test and when he was out they've been doing math and Russo's brain has been exploding because he had to count (laughs) to five Uh, it sounds like if he's feeling up to it and if he's feeling good which uh, Bill Guerin said today he feels fine Minnesota could get Jonas Brodin on that back end and that would be a huge huge addition yeah he's a needle mover for me Uh, as as good as it gets in this league 
when that puck is chipped in it, getting the puck retrieved and efficiently breaking the puck out. He and Matt Dumba together are such a potent pair. And uh, so that's – we'll keep the fingers crossed. It's going to be a tough matchup. Uh, when I think of the Blues, they're a team that is built for outdoor hockey. They won a cup with good, strong physical play, and they're good in all areas of the game. They're good in the faceoff circle led by Ryan O'Reilly, so they possess the puck a lot. They're physical, yet they have skill. This is not going to be an easy out for uh, for any team to beat St. Louis, but specifically for the Wild, they're going to have to get back to their game. Bill Guerin touched on it today in his presser. We've had time now to kind of reassess what made us successful early in the year, what we got away from in those last couple of games before this goofy break. And he's, he hit the nail on the head. They need to be more of a north-south team, not too much east-west. Let's get back to the grind. And I think this will be a perfect opponent to do that. They're going to play that style of hockey outdoors. Minnesota comes into this game riding a four-game losing streak again. It's been, you said, what, December 9th since the last victory, which was in so San it's Jose. It's been spread out over the course of three weeks. It's been spread out for quite a long time. And, I mean, you're, you're talking almost a month since the last time they won a game, but they've only played four games in that stretch. And they won the eight prior to that. And they won the eight prior to that, correct. And, you know, they, they, it's not like they were horrible for that entire four-game stretch. I, I thought they were a little sleepy in that Buffalo game, the, the one game where they actually ended up getting a point out of things. I didn't think they played horribly in that game in, in Los Angeles. I didn't think they played horribly in the, in the game in Las Vegas. But... It's been a good time, I think, for a break. The really interesting part for me is going to be the start of this game. St. Louis has been dealing with COVID issues. I mean, the whole league has been dealing with COVID issues, but St. Louis has been as well. They haven't played a ton of games, but St. Louis played last night. So they were able to knock a little bit of that rust off in a win over Edmonton, a victory that vaulted them ahead of Minnesota in the Central Division standings. What will that look like for the Wild in your mind? How long will it take for that rust to kind of get knocked off? And do you think the potential of it being a cold weather outdoor game might be kind of an equalizer in that regard? I think it's a big equalizer, Danny. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think when you get to the uh, elements playing in weather that's going to be near zero degrees, I think that kind of levels that rust playing field. And I think for Minnesota, I think they're going to be hungry. I think they're going to look at those standings and look at the turf that they've had now for the better part of this early part of the season and say they want to get that back. And so I'm excited. I like uh, what I've seen uh, this week in practice. There's been an energy around here. There's been enthusiasm. And the way the lines have been constructed, you take out your best center in, in, in Jewel Erickson Eck, they've had to kind of remanufacture some things. So we know the top line is going to be Zuccarello and Kaprizov with Hartman and we expect that. But now uh, maybe that second line can do some damage with you get Freddie Gaudreau with Kevin Fiala and our soon-to-be guest Marcus Foligno here on the podcast. That, to me, is an interesting line because you've got the speed and skill of a guy like Fiala who, in transition, might get a breakaway or two in this type of game. Then you've got Goudreau who can win some face-offs for you, play that good position. Then you've got the Moose out there to move people, play that physical outdoor type of game that he fits so perfectly. That, to me, is a line that could really be a difference maker uh, come Saturday night for Minnesota. I know we talked before that game in Dallas. We had sort of dissenting opinions on this. Uh, in terms of putting Kevin Fiala on that line. This is when Jewel Eriksson was healthy. It was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it was Fiala, uh, Felino, and Eriksson uh, to start that game before the injury. And you weren't a huge fan of it. Wes Walls wasn't a huge fan of it. And I certainly respect your guys' you know, elite hockey opinions. I love that line. And whenever Jewel Eriksson comes back. But specifically, I like Fiala with Felino because I think those big bodies do such a good job of taking away defenders in front, creating space. You know, those two, there's no question about, you know, them going into the corners, into the hard areas, retrieving pucks. And they're both skilled enough that they can find a, a guy like Fiala. It, it, it removes that element off his plate, and he's allowed to just kind of find soft spots on the ice and get into those places where scorers score. And he did that in that game in Dallas, uh, scoring that one off a, just a tremendous play. Like like that goal that he scored in that game off the feed from Felino. Felino creates the yep. turnover behind the net, still skilled enough to kind of get a no-look pass over to Fiala, who has a layup. Like, I mean, that goal right there is emblematic of what I think that line could do hopefully when Jewel Eriksson comes back if they end up staying together 
I think that could be a really dangerous line for Minnesota in the second half. Yeah, it sure looked like it in Dallas. To your point, uh, Fiala, who had been fighting the, the post factor all season long, got a couple of goals in that game. It's unbelievable, isn't it, how, how snake-bitten he's been? We even had the – I think he leads the league in, in posts. I want to say he's hit six posts this year. Yep. And as Nordy takes the ice in his uh, cow. freshly lit that? sweater, that is uh, – boy, I tell you what. Hi, Nordy. He can't find us. Yeah, it's all right. There, oh, he, there is. he is. There he is. Hey, he's on the Civ and the Scribe, our first podcast, and Nordy makes the show. He's very, he's very happy about that. He can't talk. <laughs> he's a mascot. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fun. I, I can't wait to get Marcus Foligno's opinion on that line because I think when Erickson Eck gets back here, let's say sometime in January, um, it's going to be difficult for the coaching staff to not put that Jeek line back together where you get the, the two grinders You're with the right. big rig and Foligno. Darn right, that's going to be hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? I mean, How seriously. How do you go away from it? It's such a good line for this team. But in the meantime, you know, one of the silver linings uh, when a guy like that goes out is you're forced to reshuffle the deck and build chemistry elsewhere. And so starting Saturday night with the Winter Classic, we'll see if the Wild are able to do that. It's a good problem to have if you're a head coach, right? Yeah. Especially a head coach with a Contract freshly extension. freshly christened <laughs> bank account. And I wonder if Nordy, we should have gone down there before the, uh, before the Zamboni went through. Maybe there's some loose change lying around down there. Yeah, we'll take any Nordy's, loose change that Dean Everson and his coaching staff Nordy's want gonna, to leave for us. Uh, he's going to scoop that right up. Wanted to chat with you quickly before we get to Marcus Foligno. In this regard, with some of these injuries, of course, this now opens up opportunities for other guys. We saw Connor Dewar up here today, uh, recalled as, as part of a, a taxi squad call-up. We saw Dakota Mermis called up uh, with these taxi squads now that will be going uh, through the all-star break, at least for these teams, they'll be available. It sounds like Minnesota's not going to carry a taxi squad all the time, probably just for road games with Des Moines being so close. It's not hard to get a guy up here. But this could open up uh, Kalen Addison, I should mention, too, a day or two ago. He was uh, called up to the taxi squad as well. But a guy like Addison, whether or not Brodeen can go, uh, you know, with COVID going around, injuries are going to happen. This could create some opportunity for some of these young guys that you were talking about, whether it's Kalen Addison, whether it's Matt Boldy, whether it's Marco Rossi, whether, um, you know, no, those guys aren't up here yet, but we saw, you mentioned it earlier last night, Marco Rossi was unbelievable in that game. And he had two goals and an assist. He had an unbelievable shootout winner, uh, a guy that leads that team down there in scoring. Another thing, too, I love this. I saw this on Twitter. I don't recall who tweeted it out. But a couple days ago, it sort of leaked out that Bill Guerin wanted to see Marco Rossi, you know, just kind of hint, drop the hint. You know, we need him to, to go out and play a particular way. And then sure Marco enough. Rossi goes out there and buries a couple goals, ties the game late, wins the game time, in a shootout. Danny. He it just is. seems like one of those guys. Yeah. And I know we haven't been around him because of the pandemic. Uh, we haven't had all this access to him. But he seems like a guy that's wired to, and you love this from players, at least I do, that, all right, you want to say that about me? All right, I'll go out and show that to you. That's exactly what you want from your star players, isn't it? Yeah, this kid's got something special. I saw it in training camp. You did too. Uh, we're seeing it now with the Iowa Wild. Um, he's knocking at the door. And I don't know when it's going to be, but the time is coming uh, for Marco Rossi to get his look at this level. We saw a taste of it in the preseason. We saw it in training camp. And for me, it's the conversations you have with his teammates and with the coaches. And I had a couple of those conversations during training camp. I had one specific conversation with Darby Hendrickson. That validated my opinion that this kid's going to be not just a good player, a special player in this organization. He does things that a lot of other guys can't do. And I love that they're forcing him to earn his way up. It's the depth of this organization right now. This is not a bottom feeder in the NHL. This is one of the top teams in the league when healthy. And so it might take him just a little bit longer. But with everything we're dealing with right now, injuries are going to happen. COVID's going to happen here in the next couple of weeks, if not months. There's going to be a time for Marco Rossi. And I think Wild fans are excited. I know I am. Well, and how many times over the years, Kevin, have we seen some of these higher-end prospects come up and not get that proper seasoning down, whether it's in Iowa or Houston when they were the, the AHL affiliate, and they come up a little too soon and they maybe stick around a little too long and they never quite get to the ceiling that you'd hope for. And I think Bill Guerin's doing the exact right thing uh, with these young kids, whether it's uh, those two, whether it's Kalen Addison, whether it's uh, Adam Beckman, letting these guys get an opportunity to get their feet wet 
in hockey. I know we're so all about as a society right now, you know, wanting the the shiny new toy all the time. But you got to remember, Matt Boldy this time last year is playing college hockey. Marco Rossi this time last year was you not know, playing at all. Not playing at all. Um, you know, and then he, he deals with you know the unfortunate circumstance after his COVID diagnosis, like a, a really scary, life-threatening situation. Uh, you know, Kalen Addison, you know, has played very limited number of, of AHL games. Um, you know, Beckman's playing junior hockey last year in in Washington. Like, there's time. People just let them get their feet wet at the professional level. It's only going to help them and this team in the future. And it's nice that we have a team right now where you've got that luxury, where you've got an organization that has four good lines at the NHL level, and you've got a couple really solid lines of talented players knocking at the door in the AHL. Uh, it's been a long time coming, right? For all of us uh, that have been working here for you know 15 years like I have, it's it's – it's never been in a better place than it is right now. And then I mentioned the goaltender in the World Juniors. Uh, the, the draft last year looks like they've got a couple more guys uh, in line. Uh, it's really going to make uh, for some great competition. I think everybody's got to kind of, at all position, uh, it, whether you're forward, D, or goaltender, kind of have that, that work ethic that says, I'm not going to let someone take my turf. But there are some good young players knocking at the door. And that, that creates the type of atmosphere you want. When you look at teams that have won for many, many years, that's how they've done it. They've done it with depth because at some point, you're going to need these guys to step in and play a big role. And it could be late in the year. It could be when you're making a push to win a division or get a number one seed in the Western Conference. It could become playoff time. We've seen young players step in like we did in that Vegas series last year with Addison. You want these players to be ready. To your point, let them get the seasoning they lead now for crunch time down the road plenty of good things on the horizon as you said for the minnesota wild plenty of good things on the horizon here on the seven the scribe podcast episode one presented by minnesota hockey magazine marcus felino yes is on his way here we will chat with him momentarily but first let's get a word in from our sponsor The Civ and the Scribe want to thank one of our founding sponsors, Tim Cortez Studio, for supplying the artwork for our podcast. Cortez is a famed artist and former Gopher goaltender whose work is prominently displayed on the exterior of Duluth's Heritage Sports Center in a series of 20-foot by 34-foot banners representing commitment, dedication, courage, honor, hard work, teamwork, integrity, and sportsmanship. Check out his art at www.timcortez.net. That's T-I-M-C-O-R-T-E-S dot net. Or follow Tim Cortez Studio on Facebook where you can find commission work for the United States Hockey Hall of Fame and the UMD Bulldogs Championship teams. Email timcortezstudios at gmail.com for more information. And we are back, Civ and the Scribe Podcast, Episode 1, presented by Minnesota Hockey Magazine. And as advertised, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Marcus Foligno, forward for Minnesota Wild Choice. Hello, Marcus. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? Uh, Moose, we're doing great. We're great we got uh, a big week in front of us, obviously. I know you guys are excited. It feels like forever since we've even played a game. Uh, yeah. But the Winter Classic is something we've been waiting for for two years around here. I'm sure for you guys, you're chomping at the bit. Yeah, we are. It's going to be, you know, it just feels like it's <laughs> a little mini training camp. And uh, I think that's just the way we've taken it. You know, we got um, all this time off. I think we, we used it pretty well with practice and just getting, you know, ready and getting our game back. Obviously, when you have a couple of losses, you want to go back to some basics. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited for this game. And obviously, it's such a special game for everyone involved, our fans, um, the whole, you know, the Twin Cities. And us players are so excited to be playing it. So, you know, it feels great. We got we got all this energy, we got all this uh, motivation and, and uh, preparation going into a, a big game like the Winter Classic, and you know we just want to win. When you look at the weather forecast, I think that's been the big topic of discussion, at least with us chumbalones. But how much uh, how much do you guys you know look at that? Do you think about it? What do you expect on Saturday night when the forecast is? Could be 10 below, 12 below. You know, does it matter to you guys? Uh, no, I mean, usually when I when I've gone out with the, the outdoor rink that cold, usually you bring a couple of drinks with you to stay warm. But uh, <laughs> we're not allowed to do that this time. So um, no, it's just one of those things where you just got to enjoy it. I think you got to try to you know understand that this is uh, this is what we signed up for. And you know what? It's it's awesome. I, I, uh, no matter what, I think it could be minus 40 or. You know, you're going to be you're going to be outside playing in the game. All the whole nation's watching you. Um, 
you know, so whatever, if you feel cold that day, you'll, you'll feel pretty warm inside to, to get through it and uh, to play your best hockey. It's a different game outdoors. You are certainly built for it, but how much outdoor hockey did you play growing up? Lots, yeah, I, I loved it. I, actually, I went out a couple uh, days around Christmas here in, in Edina at one of the outdoor rinks with my daughter, and just I forgot how much fun it is just to stay out there and just shoot the puck for hours upon hours. And, um, you know, you, you remember the days where, it would get kind of warm out where you take you you take the jacket off and you'd be sweating and you'd be playing like there's nothing better so i grew up in that there was a rink close to my house up in northern ontario um that you know me and my buddies after school would go to uh and yeah this is what it's going to feel like obviously with two points on the line in, in a national hockey league game but um you just gotta let the the, the old memories come back and and uh and play with it that kind of gets lost in the shuffle of this whole thing doesn't it? i mean it's gonna be cool to play outside cool to play in a winter classic this is two big points against a division rival on the line here Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't played them yet this year, too. So, you know, it's a good statement game. And, um, you know, they're a great team. And, um, you know, they've been playing well just like us. So, you know, it's two, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect, you know, setting for a Winter Classic. You know, two top teams in the Central uh, going at it. And, um, you know, we need to get back in the win column. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that they want to do whatever they can to, to ruin our, our Winter Classic at, at home. So, um, a lot of things are on the line, but like you said, just two, two points is all that matters at the end of the day, and um, you got to take them uh, against uh, the, any Central Division rival. So, um, no different, uh, you know, than you know Dallas game that we lost two points against the Central team. We got to make up for it against uh, St. Louis, and, and uh, we know that Winter Classic or not, it's the same game at hand. You're going to play an important role. You always do on this hockey team. But what I marvel at, Marcus, is with the way you've evolved into an offensive weapon for this team. You're on the power play now. You're playing with Kevin Fiala, one of the great weapons that this organization possesses. But you've also got to be that guy that's a protector to your teammates. And if things get rough, which they a lot of times do against a team like St. Louis, you may be asked outdoors to drop the mitts. Your hands, though, are an important part of what you do now offensively. How do you measure being that guy, right, the enforcer, the guy that the big brother to some of these young, talented players, but also a guy that's got to go out there and produce with those hands. Yeah, I think, you know, I think I've learned it at a younger age and, and, and throughout my career. I, I realized, you know, you know, it was always something. I, I always knew that the skill side of it was there with me. I know I can score goals or do things offensively, um, you know, not be counted on to score 50, but to do, <laughs> to do enough to, to, to play with top-end players and uh, to be in the top six. And, and um I've always knew that about myself. It's just it's just growing and, and trying to understand it too. The physical side is always there, and and, and um, it's just sometimes you have to bring it out more times than not. And um, you know, you learn throughout your career. There's a time and place for it, and um, I feel like I'm um, well educated now, uh, at knowing you know when it when it's needed, when it's not, um, you know when to pick up guys on the team and. Um, I'm happy to be that, that role player for, the, for this club. So um, I think it brings out my game too. It's how I was raised. I was raised if things aren't going the way you want it to go, <laughs> sometimes you got to do things physically. And um, it, it, it's amazing the impact it still has in the game. Yeah. Um, you know, I watched my dad and, you know, players after him um, in that era. And, you know, you get guys now that, that can force a hit and really it just it can change momentum. And... I always like being that. I always like being that guy that, you know, a hard working shift can lead to a goal for. And uh, it might not be you, but it might be the next line up. So, um, you know, it's such a it's such a long season, such a such a long game. And uh, there's a lot of things that can happen in that game. And you want to be making sure that, you know, you're a player that can dictate how a player a, a game goes. So um, I, I'm just happy that it's clicking now and, and I have the confidence that, um, you know, I'm fortunate that I'm, I'm in a great position here in Minnesota. This is the Civ and the Scribe Podcast, Episode 1, presented by Minnesota Hockey Magazine. Dan Myers, Kevin Gorg, we are with Wild Forward Marcus Foligno. And I could have done better research for this question, but have you played in one of these outdoor games before at the NHL level? No, I've not played one, no. Have you, like, what's the highest level game where you've actually played outdoors before? I don't or is think this I, a first? Yeah, this is a first for I, like juniors. Uh, it's a... Uh, like even playground hockey, I never played in those playground hockey's in Canada that I had played would play an outdoor rink once in a while. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be a first for me. Whenever there's you know this is a meaningful game, yeah, this is this is a first for me. So I'm excited. Is this you know you, you talk to guys about the Winter Classic? It really seems like one of those tent pole events over the course of the season on the hockey calendar that maybe not every guy around the league will watch this, but most guys will at least tune in 
and watch part of this game. Uh, do you have any kind of winter classic memories when you think back over the years? Any any games that stand out? I know a lot of guys say like the Crosby and the uh, in the snow in Buffalo. Yeah, that, uh, you know, I think that that probably stands out the most to me because <clears throat> being drafted by Buffalo um, and that being the first winter classic game. I mean, that was just insane. And then for to have said the kids scored in, in the shootout was you know a perfect ending probably for the hockey world, but not for the Buffalo Sabres fans. Um, <laughs> Because I remember how amazing that, like, the pitchers there, talking to the guys when I came in after, um, they had an absolute blast with that game. I mean, it's still a great game. Went to shoot out, you know, great for both sides. But, um, you know, the, the hockey world is kind of, you know, you got the best player on, on the craziest stage so far in, in a regular season, and uh, he puts it in. So that, that really stands out for me. Um, you know, all the other Winter Classics, I I, I think that was probably the, the best game. I think the, one, the other one you saw was... Um, I think it was Washington where they scored late uh, in the game to win it. Um, I think it was Troy Brower that scored. That was a really cool one, cool setting. But the, the one that stands out to me was definitely the Buffalo and Pittsburgh one, the first one ever. We A couple of years ago, pre-pandemic, we were lucky enough to go get a tour of, what's it, New Era Field, Rich Stadium, to those, those of us that are old-timers. Yeah. Can you imagine Bills Mafia and a yeah. hockey game? Like, oh, man. Zero degree weather. That had to have been just amazing. Yeah, uh, like there was tailgating going on too. So, you know, I don't think there was tables. I feel like the tables, uh, the breaking of tables really started the past like five seasons. I don't know. Maybe the social <laughs> media got around to it. Um, but Bills fans are one of the most insane fan base when it comes to tailgating. I've been a part of it, obviously, playing in Buffalo. We've always gone to the home openers. Um, but I bet you in a hockey setting, like that place was probably just going nuts. Uh, so I, I think what's great about the Buffalo fans, fan base, the Bills Mafia is that, you know, so much everyone's, you know, Sabres and Bills. And um, you got a lot of football fans who are hockey fans. You got a lot of hockey fans that are football fans. So it brought it like the whole entire city, the whole entire Western New York, New York out to uh, uh, that game. And it was probably a riot. And then to see how much snow fell too <laughs> in that game was insane. So it was awesome. So for people that are going to see the Winter Classic, it's a standalone game, as we've talked about. Everybody around the league is going to stop what they're doing and watch you and the Blues. Three months into the season, what is the identity in your eyes of this wild team? It's been a hell of a ride, Marcus, but we haven't seen you for a while. A lot of people might be listening here, maybe are coming to us yeah. because of the Winter Classic. Who are the Minnesota Wild in your eyes? Yeah, I, I, th I think you're just going to see a, a team that is just exciting to, exciting to uh, watch. Um, it's, a, it's a team that has a lot of energy. It's, it's physical, fast-paced hockey. I think that's the way we play. We've turned into that now. I think we've, we've seen um, multiple lines and, and the, the rolling of four lines, a five-on-five -five play. I think you know, I'm, this is biased, but I think we're the best five-on-five -five team in the league. And um, that's exciting. You know, Come playoff hockey, I think. What you're seeing is we're, we're a team that's ready for playoff hockey already. And um, that's what we want. You want to be a team that's ready for playoff hockey because that, that wins you the ultimate prize. And um, it's just nice to see uh, the skill set that we have, the, the, the push-up pace that we play with, and, and the physicality that we play with. And um, when we're on our A game, um, it's, it's the best hockey to watch. I think you guys turned some heads last year. You had a hell of a run. It was a great series against Vegas. It was widely considered one of the top teams in the NHL. I think you turned a lot of heads so far this year. You went through an eight-game winning streak, and I think because this team hasn't played for a while, because it's been a couple of weeks since you guys have been on a big stage like this, do you feel like inside the room with the group that maybe that expectation, that hunger for the ultimate prize has changed from when you got together in training camp four months ago? Yeah, you know what? I think the Vegas thing was was great for us. Um, I, I mean, it, it sucked to lose. We thought we could have won that thing, but I thought that brought us into understanding – that we're right there and we're not far off that path. So I think that was a big like confidence issue with our team. Um, we, we got them the game seven, you know, still, you know, terrible that we lost, but we took a lot of th positives out of that. And I think guys realize that we can do this the way we need to play and they have to play, we can get it done. So, um, you know, you, you, then you just saw it, it just clicked from day one here. We came in right with the right mindset in the training camp. Um, everyone's on board, everyone knows their role. Uh, and then we just, you know, the coaching staff, too, has done a great job with just understanding us, understanding the way we need to play, putting guys in certain situations to succeed. Um, but we're, we're a team right now that just it, it gels so well when, when we're going. And um, you know, we, we just think that, you know, 
we know we don't have the credit. We know we don't have the, the history to back us up into being a, uh, you know, the first the front runner for the Stanley Cup this year. But we don't care. We we, we want to win the Stanley Cup. We want to be the best team in the league. And whatever happens inside the room is the only thing that matters. It's the Civ and the Scribe podcast, episode one. We are with Marcus Felino. And Marcus, the news of the day today, obviously, as we record this, Dean Evason, the entire coaching staff, gets new contract extension. Uh, just kind of what are your thoughts on that, and what do you think has led to the overall team success uh, since Dean took over on Valentine's Day 2020? Yeah, you know, I was, I was expecting a big thank you from those guys, but didn't get it. So, um, no, you know what? It was just um, we're really excited for those guys. Um, just something that, uh, you know, I thought was going to come. You know, they, they just they're such a great group. Dean's done such a great job. You know, you go down the line with, with Bob Woods. Um, you know, you go with uh, McLean and, and, and Darby and um, I go with everyone. Like, everyone's just had such a good role. And, and I think what's great about them and what's nice is that we're developing something here. And I think there's something special developing. And it's nice to have security with, with who you have teaching you and the voice that you're going to hear. So, you know, since day one, you know, it just the culture that they brought, Dino's brought, um, has been well received by us and and uh, we really turned it around here into something special and um, there's a certain thing that you have when you come to Minnesota Wild or, or you're uh, get drafted or what have you there's a certain uh, um, characteristic that you got to bring to this team and, and, and what's expected of you there's, there's it's black and white now there's no gray area there's no um, you know everyone's working hard everyone's pushing each other and that comes from our coaching staff so you know it was really well deserved obviously it was us playing as well as we have helps those guys but um you know they they the coaching staff has just done a great job of preparing us all, all since they since they went to training camp and um you know we're, we're all really excited that those guys got uh, extended for sure looking at this from a perspective that kevin and i have of of being close to it but not in it like like you are ever since bill Guerin came on board here he has really preached team first team first team first that's how he won stanley cups back in the day with new jersey it's how he did it in pittsburgh and you see how the locker room is with you guys right now, how it, it, everyone has a voice. There is a very inclusive group. You see how Dean is the same way with the coaching staff. It really seems like all th that, that team first mentality, whether you're the GM, whether you're the head coach, whether you're the alternate captain or you're the 23rd guy in the roster, everyone seems to have a voice right now and that is meshed really well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing. I mean, I really do believe um, if you want to have change, it's got to start at the top. And, you know, Billy's really brought it in here. And, um, you know, you, you listen to a guy that's won. I, I think that's just, it's just the smartest thing to do. I, I think if you don't, um, it's not very intelligent on your part. I, I, you know, a guy, people who won know what it takes. And, you know, like you said, he's done it many times. And um, he's initiated that, that, uh, that feeling of wanting to be together and, and, and bring a team first mentality. And it just snowballed. I mean, it's just one of those things where everyone's bought in. And, it starts from Billy, then it trickles down to Dean, and then it trickles down to the players. So, um, you know, the whole mentality this year, just, just you know, team first mentality has, has been the reason why we've been winning games and, um, you know, why we're, we're in the position that we're in. So um, it's not a secret recipe. It just takes guys buying in, but you need people to enforce that and, and having, uh, you know, a guy like Billy and, and, and Dean to do that, it, it's, been, it's been great for us. Well, you got the big game. We're going to close with this. Uh, we talked about the forecast. It's going to be not just an outdoor game, Marcus. It's going to be a unique situation with the weather. For you, with your gear, what changes <laughs> with what you wear? Because yeah. comfort's such a big thing, right? I played goalie. My pads had to be just right when I was out in that crease to feel like I could compete. What do you have to have with your gear to feel warm enough but feel like you can compete? Yeah, I think you want to make sure everything's feeling right. But at the same time, too, I know it's cold, so I think we got some extra thermal gear that we're, <laughs> we're getting for the game. Um, I think we're going to have, like, you know, some of those uh, like kind of ski ski thermal gear that goes over your head it kind yep. of takes care of your mouth your chin your neck area you know i'm hoping to god we all know we all know minnesota winters it could get pretty windy um so i'm hoping that the, the wind's not that bad tonight it'd be nice it'd be nice if it's a dry cool uh night uh but um i think you just got to prepare making sure things feel good your gloves feel good um you know i, I i've heard that we're gonna have heat on the bench which is nice so we'll be able to stay warm there but uh <laughs> You know, you got to play the game still, so you got to get out there, but uh, you can't sit on the bench all night. But it's just one of those things where, you know, once you get good warm-up in, I think get your get your internal body going. I think that's the, the temperature internal. That's that's the main focus. So 
Um, you know, you can put as much stuff as you want. Minus 20 degree Fahrenheit is minus 20 degree Fahrenheit. You know, I think get yourself physically involved in the game early, start sweating, uh, it'll take care of itself. See, that's, I, I don't feel sorry for you guys at all. You guys have the heated bench. Tom Reed has told me the story of what it was like on the oh, bench God. at the stadium series. It was balmy on the bench. How about Cam Talbot? Poor Cam Talbot. It takes a lot for me to feel sorry for Jordan Bennington. I even feel a little sorry for that guy. There's no heated bench for those no, guys. Those they're boys gonna, are up there they're, freezing yeah. in the wind the whole hey, time. No and they're taking no the pucks. No one forced them to sign up for that position. I told them that. I said, <laughs> they no were one, dumb enough yeah. to say, I want to be a goalie, said, so they're going to pay the piper. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to get that uh, like that thermal heat gear. I think it's or Oro, or is that what yeah, it is? The yeah. Aurora gear, yeah. yeah I think I've heard about this. And oh, you press so have I. Heats, yep. That's, I'm yeah. wearing it right now, and you need yeah. it in this rink. It is ice cold. Thank you very I much. Said we'll just we'll just pour some hot water down his pads or something. Yeah. I don't know. We'll just see if that, that helps. Thaw him out, out right? Like, like we'll, when we'll, a, a dog might, comes might, in it from... It might burn the skin for a little bit, but he'll, he'll, it's so cold out there, he'll even out. The oh. only problem with it, it's so cold, it's like those experiments you see on Twitter when they take the boiling water and they toss it in the air and it freezes yes. before it hits yeah, the yeah. ground. It might That'd be the only like problem that. with those pads. Yeah, yeah, he'll be the guy to watch, though. You're right. The, the cold weather will be hardest on the goalies, so... Take well, advantage of that in the other end. Yeah, Absolutely, night, yeah. We're, we're excited for it. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun for the for the whole Twin Cities. Well, Marcus, I, I we appreciate the time. We know it's a busy week for you. You're one of the class act guys in this team. I want to close with a, a real quick story uh, from the pandemic last year. Something that uh, meant a lot to my wife, uh, who's a nurse here in town. I asked Marcus to put together like a 15 or 20 second video thanking the staff at her hospital and that night he, he, he sent along a three minute thank you <laughs> that's Marcus uh, right there all on your show, own man, man. and, and yeah, for doing I that I like, don't know what I was talking about you have a friend or, or a fan for life in my wife Jen uh, hopefully you're here forever and you never leave the Minnesota Wild but <laughs> she will follow you wherever you go awesome um, so thank you for that and thank you for everything you do in the community and everything you do with this team and wow. dealing with a couple of jack wagons like us and, and thanks for coming on no the Sip and the Scribe episode one no thank you and thanks to your wife for all that she does and it's been a crazy year still going through it so those people the first responders everyone in the healthcare world it's been amazing to see what uh, you know the the priorities in life are going through something like this and you really appreciate the people who are, you know, behind the COVID line. And, um, you know, we got to thank, uh, thank our health care workers. So thanks to your wife and uh, all the people that work with her for sure. Well said. The Moose. Marcus Foligno thanks, guys. on Siv and the Scribe, Episode 1. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next week, Episode 2. Siv and the Scribe, presented by MinnesotaHockeyMagazine.com. Dave Sports Shop in Fridley, Minnesota. The top hockey shop in the North Metro since 1969. Specializing in custom fit hockey gear, top quality skate sharpening. We've got a full lineup, CCM, Bauer, Sherwood, True, Vaughn, and many more. We also offer used and new skates. We'll take those old skates in on trade for your new skates. Dave Sports Shop, where the winners shop. Come find out why. Mention this ad to get your free skate sharpening.